So students, we are coming to another important and one of the most uh, common diseases in our country, India. It is the tuberculosis. Tuberculosis affects many joints and like the spine, hip, knee, elbow. We will discuss about the two important ones. One is the tuberculosis of the hip joint. The, in, in the introduction is tuberculosis of the hip ranks only next to spinal tuberculosis. It constitutes around 15% of all osteoarticular tuberculosis. It is always secondary. Secondary in the sense primary will be from the lungs and it is mostly common in the first three decades that is around up to 30 years of life. The initial sites of focus or the infection in the hip is affects the acetabular roof. Secondly is the epiphysis, the metaphyseal region, the greater trochanter, the synovial membrane and the trochanteric bursa. This also can come perhaps as a MCQ question. The pathogenesis of tuberculosis is very important. The tuberculosis elsewhere like the lungs, the gastrointestinal tract, tonsils spread through hematogenous spread while the tuberculous infection develops in any one of the sites which I have already been mentioned. The synovial membrane is the most commonly affected part. The tubercle formation usually causes the synovial hypertrophy resulting in panis formation. So the synovium membrane which is surrounding becomes all hypertrophy. There can be also bony ankylosis which rarely develops and the small tubercles which coalesce, that is joined together and undergo caseation uh, and necrosis and usually form cold abscess. The cold abscess is always associated with tuberculosis. So you always must remember about cold abscess. In cold abscess, there is no sign of inflammation, which is usually seen in infection. That is the five cardinal signs of rubber, dollar, collar, uh, tumor and functionalism. Panis destroys the articular cartilage leading to fibrous ankylosis of the hip joint. Bony ankylosis is quite rare. I mean to cold abscess. This cold abscess once it is formed, it will track down in the area of least resistance. Any infection will try to escape out the part of least resistance and may point at different different sites namely the femoral triangle which is present near the femoral canal, the inguinal region, the medial side of the thigh the greater trochanter, the gluteal region that is near the buttocks and ischiorectal fossa and lastly the lateral and posterior aspect of the thigh. Clinical features classically of tuberculosis is the pain. Now the pain is very typical. It is the night cries or night pain. So you may say why these night cries are there. That is, in night cries, there is rubbing of the inflamed articular surfaces due to the release of muscular spasm at the rest. So, when at night, when the patient or the person is relaxing, all the muscles are relaxed, there is no spasm. The surfaces, especially the joint surfaces, they rub amongst each other. After that, the surfaces rub, there are nerve endings which are at the articular surfaces. And that causes the irritation to the nerve and that causes the pain and suddenly the patient gets up in the night. So that is why it is termed as night cries or night pains. There is also swelling. There is deformities in the form of flexion, adduction or abduction. There is classically if it is long term illness of tuberculosis, it also causes wasting of the muscles and there are classical scars and sinuses which are present. And finally, there is a pathological subluxation which can occur at the hip joint. The stages of tuberculosis is very very important. There are mainly the four stages. This also can come as an MCQ so you must be import and you should try to remember this. The first stage is stage of synovitis. Second is stage of early arthritis. Third is stage of advanced arthritis. And fourth is stage of advanced arthritis which is accompanied by subluxation or dislocation. We will discuss one by one about the stages. The stage of synovitis is classically the clinical picture is flexion, abduction and external rotation deformity. Because of the synovium and hypertrophy and synovitis, 
the whole limb looks apparently lengthened so it's also known as stage of apparent lengthening second stage is stage of early arthritis now there is spasm of the adductor and flexor which leads to flexion adduction and internal rotation of the affected limb this leads to apparent shortening wasting of the muscles and decreased hip movements now flexion is like in the elbow there is this is called flexion this is complete extension adduction is coming closer to the body and abduction is going away just to explain the terminologies of flexion extension abduction and adduction and rotation is either when you go rotate inside it's called internal rotation and this is external rotation coming to the third and fourth stage of tuberculosis that is the stage of advanced arthritis that is in this stage the flexion adduction and internal rotation which is found in the previous stage is even more exaggerated or worsened so now instead of the apparent shortening it leads to true shortening there is further increase in muscle wasting and also decrease in the hip movement there is gross destruction of the articular cartilage of the head and femur as well as the acetabulum and lastly the stage of advanced arthritis which leads also to subluxation or and dislocation migrating acetabulum or frank pathological post dislocation mortar and pestle type or protusio acetabulae which is seen also earlier where the whole femoral head has gone into the acetabulum are one of the uh signs and seen in the this stage the tenenberg test is positive in all of the above stages mentioned now so you will in a tuberculous hip you will also see in the tenenberg test which are already discussed in the previous session coming to investigations the routine investigation in the form of laboratory test which help in doing for anemia that is for hemoglobin wbc count is done and esr c reactive proteins that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate is done the radiographs of the hip joint that is pelvis with both hips and the affected hip is always taken an anterior posterior view and lateral view in the early stages you see rarefaction of the bones looks a little hazy while in advanced stages when the head is affected and all the destruction of the whole joint space occurs and is completely destroyed is usually seen at late stages this is a x ray picture of a tuberculosis hip and you can see the articular joint space is reduced drastically in this image tuberculosis uh, always goes with the classification of shanmukhasundaram which he has described very well into different types in tb they are the normal appearance wandering acetabulum dislocated hip perthes type atrophic type protrusive acetabular type and lastly is mortar and pestle type this also can come in one of the mcqs the one of the images of the protrusive acetabular type where the head is trying to enter into the acetabulum there is a central dislocation other investigations which are done commonly in tuberculosis is the synovial fluid analysis secondly is the synovial biopsy that is tissue the mantu test is very very commonly done uh, for tuberculosis and lastly is the arthrography or arthrogram is taken the treatment is very very important in tuberculosis in the early stages and late stages we'll describe in the early stage it is in the form of chemotherapy where you have to give the akt the anti tuberculosis drug therapy attraction is given this traction helps in one relieving the muscle spasm around secondly it helps in correcting the deformity and thirdly it maintains the joint space which has been reduced specially in favorable response is obtained in this cases hip is mobilized gradually so this given physiotherapy and gradually the hip is mobilized but if there is no response you have to think about synovectomy that is removal of the inflamed hypertrophied synovium as well as arthrotomy is also carried out this is a flow chart which is describing about the treatment of the in the acute stages first you must start with the triple duct therapy as well as giving the traction if you see a favorable clinical response you can continue the same treatment further 
After that, you must do hip mobilization. If that is also further favorable, you must ambulate the patient after four to six months. Non weight bearing in the first 12 weeks is very essential. Gradually, you must start partial weight bearing in the form of toe touch, and then that is for the next 12 weeks. And finally, you can discard the crutches. A walker after unprotected weight bearing should be started only after 18 to 24 months. That is almost one and a half years to two years time. So this is a long term treatment which is needed in tuberculosis. Coming to the late stages of tuberculosis, the end result of this stage is always fibrous ankylosis. There are two type of ankylosis that is fibrous and bony ankylosis. In this stage, we see the fibrous ankylosis. Patient is put on chemotherapy again and traction. Once gross ankylosis is accepted and if the limb is in proper position, so the limb has to be in at least functional position that is 10 to 30 degrees of flexion, 5 to 10 degrees of external rotation and 5 to 10 degrees of abduction of the limb. This is the functional position which is accepted by the patient. The patient is immobilized in a plaster of Paris cast for up to 6 to 9 months and if the limb is not in the functional position, corrective ostotomy is performed. This is another flowchart which is showing that once the gross ankylosis is accepted, if it is in proper position, you must use the plasteroparis cast for 6 to 9 months, after which you can go in for partial weight bearing after 6 months with the help of calipers and crutches for nearly 2 years. But if it's in a not in a good position, bad position, you have to do a corrective Osteotomy and or arthrodesis can be used or done. Partial weight bearing after 6 months of the calipers and crutches for nearly 2 years is always recommended. Finally, we come to the surgical procedures which are done for tuberculosis hip. Common ones are the synovectomy and arthrotomy where the synovial which is hypertrophied is cut and removed after doing the all the routine investigations. Arthrotomy is also done. Secondly is the synovectomy with joint debridement with whatever the infected part, tissues, soft tissues have to be removed so the good uh, debridement is a very must. Thirdly, osteotomy is done to get in a good position of the limb. Fourthly, the arthrodesis that is fusion is recommended especially in younger. And finally, total hip replacement is also been tried but care has to be taken where you have to continue the chemotherapy regularly along with these procedures.